Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to talk about the Graco Magnum A30 and the A45 electric airless units. Hi, my name's Josh and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, then make sure you subscribe for lots of helpful tips and tricks. So today I'm going to show you a couple of new units that we've added to our range of DIY electric airless machines. So let's unbox them and see what they come with. So here they are, and as I mentioned, these are from the Magnum range, which is made by Graco. The Magnum name means it's from their DIY range of machines, which are meant for use on home projects and not intended for professional use. If you are after a professional airless machine, go check out the videos we've made on other Graco units like the GX21 or the 390, which I'll put a link to in the description below. So when I say DIY machines, what do we mean? These machines have been designed for spraying jobs that you're likely to find at home. That could be spraying a piece of furniture, a bedroom, a shed, or a popular one is going to be for spraying your fences and decking. Using a sprayer for these kind of jobs is really going to save you a lot of time and give you a great finish. I wouldn't really suggest using either of these two machines for spraying any sort of masonry paint, so be it smooth or textured. That paint's just going to be a little bit too thick for this machine to suck up. If you're looking at spraying masonry paint, then I'd suggest looking at a slightly larger machine. As always, if you've got any questions on whether this is the right machine for you, just give us a call on the number you see on the screen here, and one of our technical advisors will be more than happy to guide you in the right direction. Right, so onto the machines themselves. Both of them are going to come with everything you need to get spraying, and when you buy them from us, they're going to come with a 240 volt UK 3 pin plug. First up, let's check out the smaller two units, so that is the A30 Pro Plus. The A30 comes with everything you see here, so that's the machine itself a 7.5 meter quarter inch high pressure hose, a metal SG3 gun with swivel connection, a 515 spray tip and tip guard or tip holder, a small bottle of pump armor, a garden hose connector, and a really useful quick startup guide and manual. The A30 is obviously the smaller of the two physically, but it's also been designed to work on slightly smaller jobs when compared to the A45. The A30 has a max tip size of 15 thou, so that's tips like the 515 that it comes with, and that's gonna be good for spraying interior walls and ceilings. If you're planning on doing other jobs too, it may be worth grabbing some smaller tips as well. The tip that comes with both machines are what we call a reversible tip. So what this means is if you get a tip blockage and there's no material coming out, all you have to do is simply turn the tip through 180 degrees, give the trigger a quick pull into a waste container, that will then clear the blockage and then you can turn the tip back and carry on spraying so there's no need to take anything apart. The A30 can also spray at really high pressure, even when compared to the professional units. It's capable of spraying all the way up to 3000 PSI, or just over 200 bar. Don't get me wrong, it is not great practice to be spraying at this kind of pressure unnecessarily, but I'll show you in a few minutes how we set our pressure correctly to reduce overspray, paint wastage, and wear and tear on the pump. The A30 can supply up to one liter a minute, and it's been designed to spray around 300 liters a year. It's also serviceable, so once you wear out that pump, just send it in to us and one of our service engineers will get you up and running again cost effectively. Next up, we've got the A45 Pro Plus. We've got a couple of differences, aside from the obvious fact that it's cart mounted. So when you buy the A45 from us, you'll get exactly the same as you get with the A30, but instead of the 7.5 meter hose, you'll actually get one twice the length at 15 meters. So it's definitely been designed for those larger home projects. Spec wise is where the main differences come in, so we've got a slightly uprated pump in the A45 and it's been designed to work with around 450 litres per year, so that's 50% up over the A30. It can cope with a maximum tip size of up to 17 thou, so that's going to be tips like our 517. So when we're using the supplied 515 tip, we've got a little bit more wiggle room and we aren't working the machine too hard. 
The pump on the A45 can also supply just shy of 1.2 litres per minute and can again go to the same pressure as the A30, so that's 3,000 psi or just over 200 bar. And as I'm sure you can guess, there's also a little bit of a weight difference between the two machines. The A30 comes in at around 7.5 kilos and the larger carp mounted A45 is around 12 kilos. So not bad considering the size of the machine and the fact it comes with a larger frame. Before we head on over to the demo area, it's worth mentioning that they both come with full instructions which detail every step you're going to need to know before using these machines and we'd strongly recommend having a thorough read through them before your first use. It's also really important that we're wearing all the appropriate safety equipment, so that could be for example a mask, eye protection and coveralls. All of which is available from our website, but it's important that you do your own checks as to what you should be wearing before you start spraying with your chosen material. As I mentioned earlier, our goal is to be spraying at as low a pressure as possible to reduce overspray, paint wastage and wear and tear on the pump. But by spraying at a lower pressure, it will mean that the requirement for thinning our paint will be more when we're spraying at say 1500 psi compared to 2500 psi. That's because we haven't got the same energy to break up that material. Warming up or thinning our material will also help in this scenario as it's going to get that pressure a little bit lower as we're going to be reducing the viscosity and the surface tension of our material. Heating up the paint is especially effective or noticeable in the colder months. Personally, as a rule of thumb, I like to thin most materials I'm spraying by around 10% as it allows me to drop the spraying pressure significantly. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using the smaller A30 unit, but the setup for the A45 is exactly the same procedure. So how do we set it up? When the unit comes, as you've seen, it requires really basic assembly and the main thing we've got to do is connect our hose onto the front of the machine. Definitely worth mentioning that we're working at high pressure here so we need to make sure those are nice and tight and we're going to be using spanners to do that. Also worth double checking that connection there between the hose and the gun is nice and tight as well. Once set up we need to get the paint into the machine and get spraying. So first thing we need to do is get our suction tube and put it into the paint that we're going to be using. This should be stirred, thinned and warmed up as necessary. It's also worth mentioning that from this point on we're now working with a machine that is capable of spraying at high pressure and injection injuries are a risk so all safety precautions advised in the manufacturer's manual must be followed. Also if we're removing the tip and guard from the front of the gun it's really important that we engage the gun safety trigger lock. We then ensure that the prime switch is in the downward prime position. For we then check that the pressure is turned all the way down on the pressure control. We can then turn the machine on by turning on the power switch. We can then slowly increase the pressure until the pump starts to suck up through the suction tube and we circulate back into the paint container through the return tube. This process removes the air from the system and replaces it with our material. Once the material is coming through smoothly and consistently, we then ensure our tip is in the spray position, so that's pointing forward. We then switch our prime valve to the spray position and pointing horizontal towards the front of the machine. Now we're ready to start spraying. It may take a few seconds of you pulling the trigger before paint comes out. That's just because the machine is filling up the hose. It's going to take about half a litre with the 7.5 metre hose we get with the A30 and around a litre with the 15 metre hose on the A45. You'll notice here that I've started spraying at a low pressure and on a test area. This is to get my spray pattern right and to ensure I've got the pressure as low as I can possibly get it. Once we've got rid of those towels, that is the pressure we need to be spraying at. If you can't get rid of them and you're at full pressure on the machine, we then need to either use a smaller tip, thin the material or warm the material. As I mentioned earlier, if you get a tip blockage and the flow of material stops, simply reverse the tip, spray the gun into a waste container to clear the blockage, and then turn the tip back and continue spraying. Once you've finished spraying, you want to get as much of the material back out of the pump and hoses and saved. So to do this, we first need to depressurize the system so that we're working safely. We do this by reducing the pressure all the way down and by turning the pump to the prime position, and that will then dump our pressure. Next we should remove the suction hose from the paint container and place it into a container of a cleaning material suitable for the product we've been spraying. Now we need to empty the hose. 
So the first thing we need to do is put our safety on the trigger and remove the garden tip from the front of the gun and clean these separately. Next we point the gun at the inner side of our material container and whilst pulling the trigger with the safety off we then turn our prime switch to the spray position. Then we slowly increase the pressure until our material comes through into the container. Release the trigger when the cleaning material starts to come through. We can now put the lid on the material and put that to one side. Next up, we pull the trigger into our cleaning material to recirculate and to clean thoroughly. It's also advisable to hold the front of the gun under the surface to avoid splashing. Triggering the gun on and off will also speed up this process as it creates back pressure in the hoses. You'll also need to switch the prime valve to the prime position to clean out the material from that part of the machine to ensure it's clean for next time. Once the material is coming through cleanly, which may take a couple of buckets, you should remove the suction tube from the cleaning material and pump out any remaining liquid from both the hose and the pump. We do this by switching from the prime and spray positions. If the pump is going into storage for a little while, it's worth following Graco's steps on how to fill the pump with pump armour, or follow our guide which I'll link to at the end of this video. It's also worth removing the filter from the gun handle, so we do this by unclipping the trigger guard and unscrewing the handle. We can also remove the suction filter on the bottom of the suction tube and clean these separately. You should also regularly inspect them for damage and replace as necessary. The sprayer is then ready to be stored up for the next job. If you find that it isn't sucking up material the next time you go to use it, chances are there's a bit of dried paint inside. That's why Graco fitted these handy push button ball releases onto both machines and with a couple of pushes should free up the ball and start the flow of material. So as you can see they're pretty simple to use and after about 10-15 minutes of testing and reading through the instructions you'll understand what all the buttons and switches do. Graco have also covered these with their excellent standard warranty, details of which can be found towards the back of the user manual supplied with each of the machines. However, please note that this guarantee is on the unit malfunctioning and does not cover items that are considered to be wear and tear, or if the unit has been damaged through misuse. These two DIY units from Graco are simple and very easy to use, and a great option to go for if you're thinking about doing some spraying around the house and want to save loads of time and get a superior finish. We're an official Graco distributor, so if in the future you're looking at getting any spare parts or accessories, we can always help you out with that. As I mentioned, we also have full workshop facilities, so when the time comes around to get your machine serviced, we can also take care of that for you as well. Well, I hope this video has been useful, and I'll put a link in the description below to both the units, so if you wanted to find out a bit more, you can check them out there. If you've liked the video and found it helpful, then please hit the thumbs up icon, and if you want to find out more and get access to exclusive offers, then please subscribe to the channel. Also, if you hit that notification bell so you get a notification when we upload a new video, that way you aren't going to miss out on any new offers or content. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.